Welcome to On the Hill, a quarterly series dedicated to informing hoteliers of the latest legislative updates in the hospitality industry. In this episode, we discuss why short-term rental legislation is so important for the continued growth of the hotel industry and how hoteliers can help with the AHLA's efforts to curb illegal units. Thanks for joining us today. I'm CJ Arlotta, Senior Editor at Hotel Business, and I'm here with Chip Rogers, President and CEO of AHLA. Chip, good seeing you again. CJ, always good to be with you. Thanks for having me. So today I want to talk about short-term rentals. I know As that's, would I. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's one of uh, the big initiatives at AHLA, combating them. Where are we at legislative-wise? Well, it is really a map, if you look across the United States, that mm -hmm. has been uh, tilting in our favor, I think when short-term rentals became, and they've been around a long time, but when they became very popular because of technology in the last few years, um, initially a lot of lawmakers said, as they probably should, we don't want to stop a new technology. But then as the problems became apparent with having a, an industry um, where the rules are not applied equally to all, mm -hmm. um, we began seeing cities and counties and now states looking at this and recognizing there's a serious problem here. You can't have two people engaged in the exact same business of renting out rooms on a nightly basis mm -hmm. and one playing by one set of rules and another playing by another set of rules. And that's just the basic fairness of a, of a free market economy. That The second part that has actually become more problematic for many lawmakers is what's happening in these un unregulated, what we like to call illegal hotels. Mm -hmm. And some of the activities, which I'll be happy to comment on, sure. are, are, are pretty atrocious. Yeah. Uh, and so when you have that type of business activity and there's literally no regulation, bad things can happen and we're seeing that happen. And what are some of those activities you were talking about? All right, so um, this is from last week. So this is not from like last year or the last five years. This is right. last week alone. Right. Just a few examples. Um, anybody can look these up. You had a, um, a short-term rental in um, St. Louis, Missouri, mm -hmm. where at 3 a.m. Uh, there was a, a gunfight broke out. Um, you had one in La Jolla, California at 4 a.m. where a gunfight broke out. And this is in a residential neighborhood. Right. You had a situation in West Covina, California, where not only did a large party turn into a gunfight, but someone got shot and killed. Um, you had a situation in Lake City, Florida, where a teenager, um, using fake identity to rent this room through an online platform, um, rented out an entire house for uh, prom, and then the cops showed up, and there was lots of alcohol and drugs and other things that I'm not going to say on this broadcast. Um, so these are just examples from last week, and mm -hmm. I could give you a hundred just like that. And mm -hmm. what it, it symbolizes is that um, you have a business that has not been regulated in any way, and now beyond the taxation, beyond the regulations, you have serious safety concerns mm -hmm. that are not, are not being addressed. None of that could stand in a regular hotel. If those type things were happening at a hotel, the hotel would rightfully be shut down. Sure. Uh, but we're not seeing that happen um, with these online platforms because there's no regulation. So what are some of the challenges that your organization's having with passing some of that legislation um, to protect the industry? So originally, I think part of the challenge was is that lawmakers perceive this as hoteliers not wanting competition. Nothing mm -hmm. could be further from the truth. If you think about our own association, mm -hmm. almost every major brand in America is part of our association. Mm -hmm. Go to any major street corner in the United States. We're sitting in New York. You can walk outside to any corner and see a different brand on, it, on every corner. They all compete with each other every single day. They're perfectly fine with that. They're, they, they like competition. They get better by competition, and consumers benefit from competition. Mm -hmm. But that competition must be fair. So originally, I think lawmakers looked at this and said, yeah, this is just the hotel industry complaining because of competition. Mm -hmm. After we explained, no, we're, we're, we're fine with competition, but everyone has to play by the same rules. Right. Then they begin to understand, yeah, there's a problem here. And then when you couple that with, in many jurisdictions where the occupancy tax is 20, 25, maybe even 30 percent in places like Georgia, um, and that money is going uncollected, you've created an unbalanced playing field, mm -hmm. and the local government is missing out on resources um, for people who were previously staying in hotels and are now are, are escaping with not paying any of those taxes. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit um, about voluntary collection agreements? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I wish I had a voluntary collection agreement with, with the uh, IRS. Uh, what that is, it's almost amazing that you can get away with this. Um, imagine any of us walking into an IRS office, or in this case, a state capital, and saying, look, I, I know I owe you money. Mm -hmm. I will sign a paper telling you that I'll give you money, and you can have it, 
uh, but you can't audit me. You can't check any of my facts and figures. Just trust me. This is what I owe you. Uh, and by the way, no penalties for, for back taxes right. that, 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 that should have been owed. That's essentially what a voluntary collection agreement is. And most of them don't go through the legislative process. So it's not something that is voted on in, in any state assembly that then goes to the governor's desk. It is usually an agreement done with the Department of Revenue. Some of the states are looking at this as, well, this is a pot full of money. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. um, we tell them again and again, don't do that. First of all, that money is owed already. Mm -hmm. um, second of all, if they're paying taxes on an activity that is by definition already against the law, mm -hmm. you've got a much larger issue there. Mm -hmm. So don't be kind of swept into this idea you're going to get free money because it's never free. Um, and then this idea that a taxpayer could just simply pay what they want and there'd be no audit system to check and make sure that's correct. Um, again, all taxpayers would love to have that, but the system would crumble. Mm. And home sharing platforms like Airbnb, they, they leverage those agreements, correct? They do. Mm -hmm. um, this was really a tactic they used um, a few years ago. They're, we're still seeing them, but mm -hmm. for the most part, they, they came out and they went to those states that perhaps uh, were needing some revenue and said, mm. look, we, we, we know we can, we can deliver this amount of money mm -hmm. um, and we'll send it to you. Well, the, well, the worst case example we saw was in Florida, where um, under their VCA, not only um, was there not a provision to audit the, the tax that allegedly was owed, mm. um, if someone, a taxpayer, filed a Freedom of Information request saying, hey, I want to know about this, that, that uh, VCA actually required the state of Florida to notify Airbnb and let them know about that before they responded to the taxpayer. Oh, wow. I, I just, I've never seen anything like yeah. that. I mean, they, they must have had some great lawyers draw that up. <laughs> So how can hotelers help the AHLA in their fight against illegal hotels? Become involved. And mm -hmm. the ways to become involved, first of all, is understand the issue. Mm -hmm. But talk to your local lawmakers. We have a toolkit that mm -hmm. we can provide anybody that will kind of show them how to walk through the process, what the issues are, um, and how other cities and states have been successful in making sure that everyone's playing by the same rules. I'll mm -hmm. go back to the, the, the premise which is we're fine with competition. We welcome them into the, into the lodging industry if they're going to play by the same rules. You can't be a hotel and yet not operate under the same rules as hotels. Right. So become involved with HLA. We'll provide you with all the information. Get involved in your local community, as I tell people all the time. Um, adopt a lawmaker. It doesn't matter if it's a member of city council, a state lawmaker, mm -hmm. uh, but find a lawmaker that you can build a relationship with and so you can help that lawmaker understand some of the issues uh, that you and your industry are facing. Mm. Chip, it was great speaking with you today. Absolutely. Thank you, CJ. Thanks for joining us.